Hi, this is Herb Shapiro with the Dr. Vax channel, and today we're going to learn together how to replace a plastic extruder assembly on a 3D Bowden style printer with an all metal extruder assembly and what the advantages are of that all metal extruder. Okay, hold on, let's learn something together. For those of you that have been following this channel, you know that I was struggling a bit with my new Monoprice MP10 printer. It printed, I'd call it compliant, or easy to use PLA without any problem. But if I threw a little more difficult PLA that needed a little higher temperature, was a little stiffer, a little harder to feed, it failed to feed it adequately. So I began to go down the path of replacing the all plastic extruder on the MP10, which is really the same as the extruder on the Mini Select $180 printer with an all metal extruder. The results were spectacular. Instead of severely under extruded models, and you can see this in the corner, um, I was able to produce with the exact same filament really beautiful models. There's a slight problem on the tail of these calibration cats that I believe has to do with getting the, tune, the cooling and temperature tuned just properly. But overall, these are beautiful prints and I uh, replicated this in a number of different materials. So replacing an all plastic extruder in my case helped. Let's look at why. On the plastic extruder, that comes with uh, my particular printer, with this particular printer, there is a relatively small spring. And the reason is obvious. You can only put so much pressure on plastic or it will break. If we just look at the spring size on the all metal extruder, it's substantially heftier. In addition, the extruder that came standard on the MP10 had a very small gear area and not very coarse teeth. The teeth on the all-metal extruder were much coarser. Once again, an all-metal extruder can handle more force. So the result was that replacing the plastic extruder with an all-metal extruder worked. Let's go to the printer now and see what the steps are to do exactly that. Okay, let's take a break here for a minute. Some of you might be wondering what this pile of stuff is over here. And these are the parts of a build for a future project that I will be uh, creating a video on and a tutorial. And basically, I'm going to teach people how to make their own Tinker Toys. I have fond memories of Tinker Toys. Um, and building all sorts of objects with them, um, three-dimensional objects, two-dimensional objects. And I'm going to teach everyone how to build with Tinker Toys that consists of popsicle sticks. You can buy a thousand popsicle sticks for five to seven dollars and connectors you print on a 3D printer. Okay, back to our main topic. Disassembling the old extruder is really very easy. You take out the screws, it's pretty obvious. Uh, it comes apart easily with one exception, and that is removing the gear from the old stepper motor. For some reason, and I checked online, this happens to a lot of people, it seems to have fused slightly to the shaft. I don't know if they put a bit of cement in there or not, but removing the grub screw is not sufficient. So I ended up heating it with a bit big lighter, which caused the gear to expand, and then putting a screwdriver underneath, I was able to pry it loose. The first
first step in assembling the new extruder is to put the new gear onto the stepper motor that is attached with a small grub screw. As I mentioned, removing the old gear was the hardest part of this build, and it required that I heated the old gear with a big lighter, just the gear, not the shaft, and then pried from underneath with a screwdriver to get that off. Now I'm going to take the motor and we're going to mount it um, under the frame. It fits into the circle here and attach the frame for the new extruder on top. But before doing that, we're going to take and add the Bowden coupler to the new extruder. And we will tighten this with a needle nose priors just a little bit. The way these work, once again, is you press in on the blue part that releases it. And when you release that, it will lock onto the Bowden cable. Now that we have the coupler on the frame for the extruder, we're going to place the extruder in position. We're going to take a flat screw, or it's actually a round head screw, but it's a traditional screw, and put it in this corner. You'll note that that screw sits flush now with the top of the frame because there will be the arm of the extruder on top. We'll use a traditional screwdriver. We will position the motor, the stepper motor, into the hole so that the cable attachment, the electronics, is in the front. And we will tighten it down to just tight enough to hold it in place, but loose enough to still move about. We'll then take and start adding our frame screws. These will be different colors depending on your kit. I'm not sure why, but in my case, one is black and one is silver. We'll put the silver one in here. And those are Allen head bolts. Once again, not too tight yet because we want to be able to move things around a little bit. Now, it is time to assemble the extruder arm. The first thing we do is we put the idler wheel in and we attach it with a bolt. That can be tightened relatively tight because this is a metal frame and that will ensure it doesn't come out but it still spin, spins freely. And then we put another Allen screw, Allen bolt, into the side. That'll be used to hold the spring. This then goes on top. And the most important part is there's a little sleeve that goes into the hole there that tightly, or relatively tightly, goes around this bolt. That will ensure there's not a lot of play. We then take and put this in position. Oops, we need the correct Allen bolt. Allen wrench. And because there is a sleeve there, we also can tighten this relatively tightly, but we still want this to be able to move freely. Once that's in place, we can go back and tighten the other screws. And now all that's left is to add the spring, which goes right here. And now to add the final spring retaining screw. And that bolt should be tightened all the way. Now in our particular case, this bolt head, the Allen head, is fairly close to the filament sensor, but it ends up it doesn't touch. And when there's filament in there, it won't even come close. Now, some, as I mentioned, some of these extruders do come with an adjustment screw. This one does not. This spring is relatively tight, though, and I've had good success with this style of extruder. Now, the last step is to reconnect the electronics. And then we are ready to load filament. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to load in Hatchbox yellow filament. You need to cut it at a fairly severe angle because you want to have a real point on the end that will make it easier to load. And then you also want to attempt to straighten out the filament a little bit because you're going to have to go from here 
to here into the Bowden tube. I just noticed I had not reconnected the Bowden tube, so we will push in, push the Bowden tube all the way in, and it is now reconnected. Now we can feed the filament in, releasing the pressure a little bit so we can get it through, and then we feed it into our printer until it gets to the end of the Bowden tube. Okay, now we can heat up our print head, um, feed it the rest of the way, and we are ready to do our next print. Okay, now let's take a look at how a proper extruder should work. This is a different filament, it's a silver filament. Uh, I've printed, as I mentioned, a number of samples. They came out extremely well. I've started a long print. Let's take a look. Well, folks, I hope this video has been helpful. If it has, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, share it with everyone you know. Thanks, and let's continue to learn things together. <laughs>